Hello, everyone. Today, Chef Ben is joined by a normal Jamie to taste test some potentially pretentious ingredients. Question is, will they leave overjoyed or annoyed? Oh, I like that one. That's new. Are you using that all the way through? No. Cool. <laughs> Boys, potentially pretentious ingredient number one is under the cloche. Give it a lift. Mystery item number one. Oh, hello. What do we think that is? I think it's some form of dried linguine. I think you got it in one. Oh, cool. Why would our audience potentially see this as being pretentious and therefore want your opinion? Is it made from Durham wheat from Durham? <laughs> <laughs> Durham. Durham wheat from Durham. Durham wheat. <laughs> That's excellent. Obviously, the serving recommendation is not dry, but are you getting anything out of the ordinary? It tastes to me not dissimilar to bran flakes. Oh. I'm thinking, is it a breakfast cereal pasta? This is a Tavi pasta. A Tavi pasta is a creative collaboration with Michelin star chef Albert Adria, head chef of One Star Tickets in Barcelona. And they want you to forget everything you know about pasta. So this is a direct quote from their website. Lead with heart and the hand will follow. Everything we create is moved from this simple philosophy. No ego, no pomp, just a pure palpable pleasure of food. They sell three varieties, sourdough, smoked and umami, and we're sorted food. So obviously we have chosen the umami variety. However, remastered with koji fermentation. There's the box. 40 hours of koji fermentation locked into this dried pasta that upon cooking releases notes of miso mushroom and macadamia nut. Goodness me. Obviously we could have just cooked it up for you, but we wanted to see on sure. camera whether it behaved any differently. So we're going to get you to knock up some pasta. So there's your sauteed mushroom and cream sauce and some rapidly boiling water that has been seasoned. So let's see what it does. Six minutes is up. Umami in name, fermented for 40 hours in process. Can you taste the difference? They're nodding. It's very tasty. But if it is, as this box suggests, 25% koji, mm. that's a lot. You'd expect to taste it. Absolutely, and you can. It's delicious. It's got quite a firm bite to it. Like it's, let's say six minutes, as recommended on the box, it is al dente, it is to the tooth, it has got a, a good texture to it. You know how whole wheat pasta has a different, a very slightly different texture? A bite to it. Yeah, than sort of white wheat pasta. This has that, but it's further. In terms of a chew, and then also that, sounds silly, that darker flavour. Well, well, I was going to say that nuttiness, which reminds mm. me of bran flakes again, but on the box it's saying macadamia nut in, a, in kind of sensation. Would you like to take a guess at how much that box cost us? is beyond the fermentation, the process. It might have traces of just, I think, because the kitchen it's made in, but it's not made with egg, like a fresh pasta. It is very much a dried pasta without that sort of egg content. It's only four portions in the box, but we have to move our mind away from the pasta just being the cheapest chip staple that bulks out a dish. This is the point, and I'd say four pound a portion, 16 pounds. I don't want to be right, but in my mind, I was thinking 20 pounds. This particular box cost us $29.99. Goodness me. Regardless of your context, still feels like a quite a considerable investment for pasta. Ooh. That's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot of money. But seven pounds per portion, are you getting a difference in taste that's going to elevate your dishes? Because where these things are interesting to me is they are worth some extra money if they yeah. make up for my cooking ability. Yeah. You'd need an incredibly specific audience to serve that to, to appreciate those subtle differences. Is premium and the first of its kind. Like, voted second best chef in the world, and you've got a little box of him, of his mind, his approach to food, and you get to just rehydrate it. You're not buying pasta, you're buying an experience. Well, now you sound pretentious. I can 100% see it from that perspective. Uh, it's not a repeat purchase for me, but I think it's brilliant. What a strong start. Mm. Lift the cloche for potentially pretentious ingredients. Number two. Ta-da! It's an unidentifiable powder. With a wonderful shine. 
Have a taste, see if you can identify what it is. It's got a real sparkle on it. I always worry, your body's unlikely to digest that, so it's gonna come out just as sparkly the other end. Lovely. Cover it in glitter, that's what they say. It's got like a fizz. It's very um, drying. It is zesty and citrusy and citric acid, but it's kind of almost the cranberry, kind of drying, hibiscus kind of notes. It's on my tongue. Wait, you stick your tongue out. It's glittery. It's got a glittery <laughs> tongue. We have all had this in its original form. This is the first time you're tasting it in a powdered form that has additional ingredients added to it. I know what it is! 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 It's a Szechuan bud. It absolutely is. This is electric dust fire from Wonderlush. So this is a cocktail ingredient made from the buzz button and the Szechuan bud. Uh, natural alkaloid that stimulates your salivary glands, turning you into what they claim a super taster. Um, I don't like the way it sparkles. Oh, come on, Evers, you boring old git. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it that makes it sparkle? And like, I know it'll be food safe or it'll be in such minute levels that they don't have to declare it as food safe, but do you want the sparkle inside of you? I Some of us already have the sparkle inside of us. <laughs> we all want a bit of sparkle inside of us, Evers. What other ingredients do you think have been added? The buzz button is not that colour, so I'm also thinking it's kind of sumac-y, citrusy, maybe cranberry drying. There's an earthiness. Guajillo and Aji Amarillo chili? I wouldn't have guessed that. No, you're not getting any I mean, heat. No, yeah. you're not, because you're confused and distracted by the buzz button which is making your tongue tingle. It's not a spice. This was developed uh, for use in cocktails by award-winning mixologist Mariana Boarini. So shall we try it in a cocktail? Oh, yes. well, yes. Let's do it. So you've got some chilled glasses, some tequila, some margarita mix. Here's the packet. And, Ooh. what? <laughs> no. For the first time ever, this is a pretentious ingredient and a gadget in one, because it came with this. If you don't want it, punch it away. It's a... It's Diffuser. A, yeah, it's a... Find out what mouthwatering actually means. Spice up any food or beverage. Lick it. <laughs> Wait 30 seconds, text your mum, check your Instagram, drop it like it's hot, swipe right. And once you feel that tingling feeling, you're ready for your taste buds to go on an electrifying roller coaster of a flavour and sensation. Up here. Down here? Over here? Lick it. Text your mum. Already done it. <laughs> or check her Instagram out. Thanks, mate. It's very nice. I could try it. It's very zingy. So I'm going to try it on its own. Yeah. So I can taste the difference. That's not safe. <laughs> okay. Give it 20 seconds. They say 30, but yeah, it's, it is. Well, my mouth is so moist. Okay, yeah, yeah, it tingles your tongue. I get how they say to use it, but I would also recommend just doing that. It's nice got some in a bar. On it. Nice in a bar. It's going to look great. You get the glitter on top, and then every sip you're going to get the buzz. I mean, it's definitely buzzy, is how I'd describe that. But my tongue is so wet, and I don't know whether I'm tasting things more as a result. But it certainly is an experience. It's an extra sensation, isn't it? So would you like to take a guess at how much you think we paid for that packet? The fresh Szechuan buds are quite expensive. Mm. $25. 25. I had 25 pounds in my head. $25, 25 Much pounds. Mm. 27 pounds 99. About $30. It's a lot, but it's a, lot I, a little goes a long way. And that's the thing to remember is actually We've used it here once, but you could use it at a margarita party for half a dozen. Like what happens with a lot of potentially pretentious ingredients, it's the branding, the copywriting, the marketing that goes on around it that makes it feel pretentious. The product itself gives you an experience in a, in a weird way, but only when you know what the experience only is. Only when you've done it itself. Yeah. Itself. Well, the question is, the Wonderlush Electric Dust Fire, is it pretentious or not? Yes, but I actually quite like it. I love a, a pretentious one that's good. I really like it as well, but it is pretentious. Number three. Oh, yes. I'm excited. I 
think I know what it is. Really? Is it pistachio paste? Read the game. Yes. Now let's see. I don't like playing this game with him. <laughs> In the world of patisserie, these are unreal. Let's see if it meets your expectations. Mm -hmm. Sweet and cloying, but nutty, earthy. It's very pistachio. It's absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely right, this is a pistachio cream, and it's a collaboration between confectioner Fiescarano and Dolce and Gabbana. Would you like to have a look at the packaging? Yeah, let's say, yeah, same, same. Yeah. So good. A jar that size probably costs more than a little house in a remote Italian village. <laughs> it's Beautiful. It is a it? gift market as well. Yeah. I don't, this isn't something I don't think you're buying and, you know, slapping on a slice of toast like you would a chocolate and hazelnut spread. Traditional pistachio creams often made by blitzing pistachio with sugar before adding things like white chocolate, milk, sometimes butter, etc. You end up with a wonderful paste like that. Now, the amazing thing about fresh produce from this region, so Sicily, is they benefit from that volcanic soil, which makes them so uniquely special and so expensive <laughs> per kilo. Earlier, you said this isn't the type of thing that you'd want to spread on some toast. So we've got you some toast. <laughs> <laughs> we do also have some mascarpone and uh, powdered sugar. See if you can whip up like a, a cheesy pistachio schmear for your oh, salad. Schmear. And obviously, you know, delicious food is what we're about. But when I first saw this product, I was thinking, that's great. And the only thing I could think about was putting it in the middle of a macaron. So the guys thought, let's knock up something accessible for a normal. So instead of macarons, we've just got toast. We're making a sandwich. Yeah, but we're right. making a, an open sandwich, your favorite. Now that is beautifully mellow. Using that as a cheesecake mm. filling would be Unreal. In cannoli. Oh! Keep it Italian. Mm. Or in cannelloni. Oh! <laughs> in ravioli. Yes! Oh! <laughs> Before we continue down this road, uh, do you want to take a guess at the price? I'm going to throw a number in the air. Do it. And I might vomit at the same time. But if I was to say 75 pounds. <gasps> You'd be ridiculous. Okay. 45. No, that is ridiculous. And even what I'm saying is ridiculous. Lads, do your best to keep your pants on. This is <coughs> 24 99 oh, 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 bargain. That makes more sense. I don't know whether I could ever justify buying that for me. It's a great product. You can definitely buy pistachio cream cheaper, obviously. If you make it the centre of the celebration, if you've got friends over and you're doing three courses, you're doing a little antipasti, you're doing a main course, and then a whole pile of biscotti, dark coffee, biscotti, dipped in that, people won't want to go home. <laughs> it's delicious, it's great. Is it pretentious? That's the question. No. Yes, this is pretentious. What's inside isn't pretentious. So what you're saying is Dolce Gabbana is pretentious. Yeah. The product isn't, mm -hmm. the brand is. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Final one. Now, by tasting this, it puts you in only a small handful of people who have done so in the world. Lift the cloche. This year, we celebrate 150 years of exciting flavors in food and drink around the world. This is Tabasco 2018 limited edition 150 years diamond reserve. <laughs> so it's already <laughs> five years, four, six years old. Yes. So the crazy thing about this is it retailed at $34.99 when it came out in a very small batch, limited edition, and we'll discuss what it now costs to get hold of one six years later. I mean, they've gone for champagne vibes, haven't they? Big, big, big time. And given that one of the ingredients is sparkling wine. This was to celebrate Tabasco's 150th year anniversary, and it introduces a new blend, hotter, more complex, aged for up to 15 years. Wow. So we are gonna crack that open for the first time. I need to give a particular shout out to Sundar who helped me source this. This claims to maintain the signature characteristics of Tabasco. It is considerably spicier. So a normal Tabasco is around 2,500 to 5,000 on the Scoville. This is 50,000 to 250,000 okay. on the Scoville. It's so not a bit more, like Scoville 10 units. times the amount. So you have the original Tabasco. It's that vinegar, it's that 
acidity. It is a spice, but it's a spice that dissipates very quickly. Perfect for Bloody Marys, perfect for eggs. Nice and familiar. Very nice and familiar. Tasty. Everything we know and like. The same level of vinegar, I would say. So you still get that hit of vinegar first, and then it's there. Oh, that, woo. Yeah, that is a lot spicier. Is but there any more depth? I would say not, not fruitier. Okay. I don't know how they age it, but it, it, it gives me almost tobacco vibes. Do you like it? I do like it. I don't know if I'd be able to tell you that it was special. You okay. wouldn't be able to use it in the same applications because it is so spicy. that much hotter. 10 times hotter in yeah. number. A little bit like, referring back to the wine world, if you buy into the particular chateau or house, then of course you're tasting that brilliance. Yeah. You buy into the story. Well, obviously no one eats hot sauce out of a glass jar. We have a little bit of food for you to sprinkle it on and try it in situ. Excellent. So you have uh, some oysters on caviar, Ebers, and Jay, you have some fried chicken chips and cheese. <laughs> Are you okay. sure the meal's were the right way around? Get it on. Right. Oh, no, don't fall for it, Jay. We've done this enough times in this video. Oh, science. Try it before. Science. Don't forget and then the science. science. Cheers. Cheers. Just three ingredients. Sparkling white wine vinegar. Champagne vinegar, but probably not from champagne. Red pepper and salt. Cheers. Cold, briny. You won't believe this, but the nacho cheese is quite heavy. <laughs> what this does is just lifts it, gives it that zoom. So when it comes to limited edition foods, do you have a perspective on it, Ebers? A little bit like the Dolce Gabbana, it becomes a collector's piece rather than anything to do with the quality of how it tastes. Mm -hmm. And that is why price is a little bit irrelevant. How much do you think we paid for this bottle. And I'm just gonna say, to prove that I got it for a bargain, that there are bottles of this being sold for up to $800. I think you've spent 500 pounds on that. Oh, mm. That is sackable, Evan. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be here if that had happened. 300. 140 pounds. Oh, fine. Yeah, there you go. Fine. That's what I thought. Fine. But for a story, and for the experience and being able to share that with all our amazing mates online. My point being, there is no safe investment in 2024 that returns 50, 100%. And you just told me we could have sold this for $800. <laughs> so, the Tabasco Limited Edition Diamond Reserve, is it pretentious or not? We had this conversation around Tesla beer. I've had this conversation countless times around fine wine, and it's not pretentious. It's just a world I wish I could afford to live in. I can't get my head around buying a food or drink item and not being interested in the food or drink inside the item. It's pretentious. Wow, you've heard our chef and our normal's opinions. What were yours? Comment down below, let us know. Also, please continue to suggest potentially pretentious ingredients for them to review next time. That's where we get all our ideas from, so thank you so much. 